Hey everyone, this is Nick Diabertis teaching you financial modeling. Today, we're going to be learning about how to improve the presentation of Python models. This is part of our lecture segment that introduces the advanced financial modeling with Python course and closes out the financial modeling with Python and Excel course. So we, um, in the first course, the financial modeling with Python and Excel course, we have just been focusing on um, having the model in a Jupyter notebook and uh, doing a little formatting on the output within the Jupyter notebook. So printing out strings that um, explain the result rather than just showing a number, um, using data frames and styling the data frames um, using number formatting to get the numbers formatted appropriately, using plots uh, in order to add some visuals to it. Um, but we didn't really go beyond that. Um, and when we think about the Excel side of things, it's very straightforward, right? Like uh, the model is what you see. Um, and so if you just kind of organize things well in the model and you format it well, um, in Excel, then that's going to be all you really need to do. And that's kind of the end of the story. But for, um, uh, Python, it's definitely more complicated, um, in terms of how you're going to present your results because there's a lot of different possibilities. Um, so on one hand, it can be, uh, you know, some additional steps to get your model ready, the results from your model ready to present to someone else. Uh, but on the other hand, you have such a larger uh, array of options um, and possible ways that you can present your model. Um, and some of them don't really take uh, much work at all. Like, I mean, you can already go with the way that we covered in in the first course of just you know having everything in the Jupyter notebook as long as you have all the clear sections uh, and you have the uh, markdown in there kind of explaining what's going on that's still a pretty good presentation medium it's not bad and it doesn't take much extra effort um, so that's kind of the easiest method um, but least, least uh, I guess, ideal for the end consumer of your model if they're a non-technical consumer. Um, because, you know, when you look at an Excel model, all the formulas are hidden unless you click into cells. But when you look at a Jupyter Notebook, all the code is there no matter what. Um, and so someone who has no idea about Python or what you're doing in this model is just trying to read through and get the results. Um, you know, they're gonna to have to go through that code as well. And you can tell them just, you know, ignore the code, but it's still in there. Um, and it can be distracting from the results. Um, so we'll discuss a few different approaches we can take with Python to present your results. Um, going from the extremes of you know, just have everything in one Jupyter notebook. They can just skip over the code uh, to all the way to uh, creating actually a web application where they can um, interact with your model by just changing the inputs and seeing all the outputs right there, dynamically updating and everything. Um, but of course, that takes the most effort to get there. Um, and so we'll cover some options in between as well. So one thing which is quite simple that we can do, um, so this is just going one step beyond everything in the Jupyter Notebook, um, is to try to just separate out some of that logic. Um, so you um, just take all the main classes and functions in the model and you put them into separate .py files, into Python modules. Uh, and that way you can import those into the Jupyter Notebook, but it's not going to show all of the function class definitions in the notebook. Um, 
So then it's, you know, just you import a couple of things. Maybe it's even just one function, which is just, you know, run your model. And then it spits out all of the output from it. Um, and then, you know, there's only a couple lines of code in there. So it's really not distracting at all to a non-technical person. Uh, all your code is just offloaded into these separate Python files. Um, so this already goes a long way to making your model uh, more readable for a non-technical consumer. Uh, but one drawback you still have here is it's still a Jupyter Notebook. And so they still have to have Python in their system. They still uh, have to have Jupyter set up and everything uh, and have to understand how to open a Jupyter Notebook, which, um, you know, at this, if you've gone through the first course, it's straightforward at this point, right? But, you know, when you got started with that course, you probably didn't know how to open a Jupyter Notebook either. And so, you know, you would then have to go explain this to your boss or whoever, how to even open this thing. Um, and so there's still uh, drawbacks with this approach. So kind of the next way going towards making it easier and cleaner for the non-technical person, but taking a little bit more work to get there is going to creating reports. Um, so if the um, consumers of your model don't need to play around with it at all. They just want to get, you know, what are the results from you running the model? Then reports are a good fit. Um, and there are three different um, general ways that you can um, go to making kind of a um, prepared report um, in addition to outputting to an Excel file. So you can always output to an Excel file and um, you can even do some formatting from the Python code into the Excel file. Um, so that's one route. Um, and then you can go where you don't even need to have Excel uh, to view the results, which uh, the main approaches there would be HTML and CSS, LaTeX, and uh, going directly to a PDF. Um, so if your ultimate goal is just to get a PDF, then you can just go directly to that, but also both the HTML and CSS approach and the LaTeX approach um, are gonna allow conversion into a PDF as well. Um, so you know, generally, personally, I have not tended to go for the direct PDF solutions because I can go for one of the other formats and then I'm not only able to have it in, in a PDF, but also in other formats as well. Um, so HTML, CSS natively can be loaded up in a browser. Um, so it, you can view it like a web page. And then uh, LaTeX um, can also be converted to HTML. And so you can convert it to PDF, view it that way, or convert it to HTML, CSS, and view it in a web browser. Um, and uh, you know, in building this report, basically you're gonna have some kind of layout in the report, and then you're gonna wanna drop your data into it, your results into the certain spots in the report. Uh, and this kind of general structure is referred to as templating. Um, and those are generally easier to go through doing um, HTML and LaTeX approaches than with the direct uh, PDF approach. So another reason that I don't generally recommend going direct to PDF, but if that is all that you, you know, that's all you're ever going to need is a PDF and you're not comfortable with HTML and CSS or LaTeX, then it can make sense to do that. Um, and when we get to the resources section, I'll talk about, um, some of the packages that are generally used for these different approaches. Um, so then we get all the way to the, um, other extreme of the best, uh, experience for the non-technical user of your model. Um, but also the most work on your end, uh, as the creator of the model to set this up. And that is creating an app out of your model. Um, which 
know some people watching this right now may think I'm crazy to say create an app out of your financial model. Um, it, it sounds on the surface like a huge amount of work, but it's really not. Um, there are ways you can actually just take an entire Jupyter notebook and convert it into an app with no effort on your end. Um, and then there's also ways to extend your Jupyter notebook to make it into an app in a, in a more custom way that you want. Um, so with, with neither of these approaches, do you have to go and just, you know, completely like go and learn, you know, full on software engineering to create full stack apps and then totally recreate your model. Like that's not what I'm talking about here. It's using some packages, which are going to help you basically add on to your model to convert it into an app, um, which is easier than it sounds. Now you can go all the way to creating a web app from scratch. Um, certainly that's a route to go, but that's like going even further in that extreme direction. That's probably going to be a lot more work than you want to, uh, you know, do for this model. Ultimately, you know, you've, you've got your model done. You just need to show up the results. You don't want to be spending days or weeks on end to build out a, a full on scalable web app. Um, you can just use these packages to convert your Jupyter notebook instead. Um, the, the big advantage of publishing this as an app is that the, uh, someone who knows absolutely nothing about Python does not have Python on their computer. Um, and you know, maybe doesn't even know anything about financial modeling. Um, they can play around with your model. They can adjust the inputs. They can see how it changes the outputs, um, try different things. You're basically building like a dashboard they can play around with and try out different things and see the results. Um, so this you know, could end up saving you time if uh, you have a working relationship with your boss where um, you have a model and then you bring the results and they say, well, you know, try it with these different things and you run back and change your model around and then generate another report and bring them that. and says, oh, we'll try these other things, and you're just going back and forth, well, you know, you could eliminate that whole cycle if there's an app that your uh, boss could just play around with and, and see all the results. Um, so this is definitely the most polished way to go as far as presenting the results, but it is, uh, you know, certainly more complicated to do that, though not that complicated to convert your Jupyter Notebook directly to an app. And one other thing I want to talk about on presenting your results in Python is um, looking at interactive plots uh, because we did some some basic plots with pandas and well, even before getting to the interactivity, we can make more advanced plots, um, you know, customize them in lots of different ways. Take a look at um, the matplotlib library, which um, is what pandas uses in the background to generate the plots. So you can do lots and lots of different customizations there. Basically anything you can imagine, you can create in matplotlib, it's very flexible. Um, but there's also these interactive plots where uh, you see the plot, but then you can zoom into it. You can select certain points out of it and get more information. Um, and you can interact with it different ways. Maybe there are drop downs to change and look at different things in the plot, um, et cetera. So <clears throat> there are a number of libraries out there which help with this, such as uh, Bokeh, uh, Altair, Plotly, uh, Hollow Views. Um, there are lot, lots of them out there. Um, and they can. Uh, make a really nice experience for using your model and kind of um, really drilling into the results. Um, now, of course, uh, the interactivity only makes sense if there's actually, um, you know, code running behind it. If uh, you're just generating a, a PDF report, you can't have that interactivity. Um, but if you're if if the person viewing your model is running the Jupyter notebook itself then it can work, or if you go and create an app, then it can also work. Um, 
and I, I mentioned hollow views specifically um, as a really interesting plotting library where not only does it support these interactive plots, uh, but also it's it's kind of a whole new way to do plotting. You basically just kind of um, you tell it things about your data, and then it can kind of understand your data to be able to generate the right interactive plots. Um, so you can still customize things, but um, I find that it can generate these interactive plots with um, very little effort in general. So I definitely recommend checking that out. And as far as the resources, which you can go and use to learn these topics in the meantime, before I'm able to go out and uh, produce lecture videos on them, uh, there's um, a couple resources here on uh, creating reports, um, HTML, CSS reports, um, and getting that to a PDF. Um, and also a, a guide specifically looking at Jinja to help with this. Templating Jinja is a, a library that's made specifically for templating, regardless of um, what the ultimate output format is. Um, and then I mentioned going directly to the PDF, um, so you can use Report Lab for that. Um, and you can go direct to LaTeX using uh, the PyX LaTeX library. Um, which I am actually the author of. So if you um, run into any issues with that library, definitely just reach out to me and I'll be happy to help. Um, but it's it's very nice for, um, you know, I use it a lot for generating PDFs from my models um, because you can just create Python objects um, which ultimately render into LaTeX and then uh, generate the PDF from it. So you don't have to think about LaTeX. You don't have to think about how you generate a PDF from LaTeX. You just create some Python objects and you ultimately get a PDF. So um, it's a pretty nice library to work with. Um, and then um, some more resources on matplotlib, um, looking at hollow views as well. Um, and then um, some resources on building the apps uh, from your model. So panel is a library that um, you can use if you want to do a little more customization on what your app is going to look like, how you interact with it. Um, it allows you to, um, you know, add little widgets and stuff to your um, Jupyter model. Um, and a tutorial on that as well. Um, and then voila is uh, what I was talking about, which helps you just take your existing Jupyter notebook and just convert it into a web app, like essentially zero effort required. Um, so um, that that's definitely useful if you want to get to a web app with as little effort as possible. Um, and Anvil, Anvil is another option for that. Um, that that is not um completely free i think that's a paid service um and then a couple of resources here um should anyone want to go and learn more full-on full stack web development um to build really custom things um which again that's a lot more work i would not recommend that for the majority of people that just want to display the results of their model um but it is an interesting direction to go down if you want to do really custom things or have a really scalable uh, application. So that's an overview on um, how you can present your model results in Python. And I hope in the future to release more videos on each of these particular topics in this area. So thanks for listening and see you next time.